Hello guys, I should can plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. What the fuck is this piece of shit? And yes, finally, and I repeat, finally, AMD's FSR3 has been officially announced alongside the R DRX 7700 XT and 7800 XT graphics cards. But it seems that well my plans went away and they actually presented the 7700 XT, 7800 XT, 3, <laughs> 7800 XT and FSR3 before I could actually do the live stream anyway. It seems that we'll get more info on the live stream as well, so I'll still do it. But well, let's start with FSR3 that features fluid motion. Almost as fluid as today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG More, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings, and you'll have an activated system. Now, back to FSR3, well, as stated by video cards, um, AMD confirms FSR3 games, and yes, like they say, the long overdue update to FSR3 is finally here, with the first two games being Forspoken and Immortals of Avian. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Forspoken, a title from Square Enix, unfortunately fell short of expectations upon its release on January. On the other hand, Immortals is a recently launched game that has the distinction of being the first to utilize Unreal Engine 5.1. And then we have the official image by video cards, well, official image by AMD that was shared by video cards, saying massive performance with FSR3, super resolution upscaling plus AMD fluid motion frames plus anti-lag plus, going from, well, 4K ultra high RT settings anyway, from 36 native resolution to 122 frames using the most likely FSR, yes, FSR3 at performance mode, basically upscaling from 1080p, doesn't really matter, and then using the, um, the fluid motion to increase the frames as well. But, but well, this is just a static image, we can't really see the, the image quality because we haven't, we haven't FSR3 right here to test, uh, but in terms of FPS it seems that it is more or less on par with the LS as frame generation. Now, will it work for all GPUs? Uh, will it work for the previous generation GPUs at least? Um, will it deliver um, lots of motion artifacts? Will it be good? We don't really know. I guess that we'll have more info on the live stream to come. But still, we know that it is coming and the first two games are Forspoken and Immortals of Avian. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. okay. AMD showcases the capabilities of FSR3 using Forspoken, running at 4K Ultra High RT preset. With FSR3 performance preset in action, the game's frame rate surged from 36 to 122 FPS, representing nearly a 3.5 times performance increase. AMD has not yet disclosed the complete details regarding FSR quality tiers and support for Radeon and other GPU models, as I said before. And while AMD has confirmed that FSR is coming soon, unfortunately, they have not yet provided a specific release date. Should that be the case during the official event later today, we will post an update. So, as I suspected, well, they don't have dates, they don't have more information, and that same information will be presented on the live stream in a few hours. But still, FSR 3 is finally announced, and we know that we have at least two games at launch, which is not that bad. Um, and if FSR 3 is really as easy to implement as AMD stated it is, uh, for example for the games that already support FSR 2, uh, AMD said that FSR 3 was really really easy to implement, so if that comes to be true, uh, it means that maybe the developers can easily implement FSR 3 and in, in let's say like um, 2, 3 or 4 months FSR 3 will be in lots of games. I really hope that's the case. And well, I won't really extend myself much more over this because that's all the info that we have so far. Basically, FSR 3 is coming and it is presented or will be presented in two games. And that's all we know with fluid motion and so on, so on, so on. So we need more details. Now, as for the RX 7700 XT and 7800 XT, those cards were already presented. And these are actually interesting options. Interesting and at the same time, strange options. 
The RX 7800 XT utilizes the full configuration of this GPU featuring 60 compute units, 128 AI accelerators, 16GB of GDDR6 memory clocked at 19.5 gigabits per second over a 256 bus width. The base GPU clocks are near the 2400 MHz and it consumes 263 watts of power. And the 7800 XT is actually one of the, well, both are, but this is the oddest pick that, I, that I've seen. So, it uses the full, the full Navi 32 configuration up to 60 computer units, and it is quite strange because, for example, the, it has 60 computer units, while, for example, the 6800 XT has 72 computer units, meaning that, uh, well, it has actually less computer units, which does not follow the trend at all of the RDNA 3 of the RDNA 3 GPUs. Because if you if you watch, for example, the 7900 XT. It has more computer units than the, the 6950 XT or the 6900 XT. The 6900 XT has 80 computer units and even the 7900 XT has 84 computer units with, for example, the, um, the XTX going even further and having, if I'm not mistaken, 94 computer units or something like that. So RDNA 3 takes things further. For example, if you look at the 7600 non-XT, while the 6600 non XT has uh, 28 computer units, the 7600 has 32 computer units. Once again, meaning that uh, all the cards so far, all the three cards so far of RDNA 3 architecture have more computer units than their predecessors. While on the RX 7800 XT, it's actually the opposite. It has 12 computer units less than its predecessor, the RX, the RX 6800 XT. And that leads me to believe, or that leads me to think at least, if it has 12 computer units less, will, will, will it at least perform the same as the 6800 XT? Because 12 computer units less is quite a lot. 60 computer units is what the 6800 non-XT brings. So I would actually understand if we had, for example, this card as the 7800 non-XT. But as the 7800 XT, uh, well, it's kind of odd actually. Kind of all. And it actually gets even stranger once we look at the RX 7700 XT that once again, like all the other RDNA 3 cards, has higher computer units than its predecessor. So while the 7800 XT uh, has less, all the other RDNA 3 cards have more, which makes absolutely no sense. Or they found the holy grail on the 7800 XT somehow or it just didn't, well, it just, things just didn't go as they planned and they actually had to use the 7800, the 7800 XT uh, on Navi 32 instead of a downscaled Navi 33, or in this case, Navi 31, sorry. Um, because that's what they did with the 6800 XT. So they used a smaller die for the 7800, 7800 XT. That should be the 7800 non-XT. But well, back to the 7700 XT. We have 54 computer units and 108 AI accelerators. A notable... A notable improvement over the previous generation 6700 XT with its 40 computer units. This model also utilizes 12 GB of GDDR6 memory across a 190-bit bus, although its memory clock is slightly lower at 18 gigabits per second. Notably, the RX 7700 XT exhibits a higher TBP compared to the RX 6700 XT with a 50 watts increase to 245 watts. So as I told you before, the 7700 XT makes the 7800 XT even, well, even stranger, because the 7700 XT once again has more computer units than its predecessor. For example, the 5700 XT has 40 computer units. The 6700 XT has 40 computer units, but the 7700 XT, like we saw here, has 52 computer units. Just 8 computer units less than the 7800 XT. So this means that these cards will perform very close, they will be very close in terms of performance, and that's why I believe that AMD actually decreased the VRAM frequency of the 7700 XT, because otherwise these two cards will be would be very, very close in terms of performance, and that's something that should never happen, because if you look, for example, at the the 6700 XT and 6800 XT, the performance difference is quite a lot. I would say, let's say, uh, 25 to 30% in between those cards. And looking at the specs alone in between the 7700 XT and 7800 XT, I can actually see that the performance di difference will be like 20% at most. And that's 
because they, they actually reduced the VRAM frequency on the 7700 XT. So if you manage to actually uh, mod the BIOS, let's say, and increase the frequency of that card, it will be more or less on par with the 7800 XT because once again, uh, it's only eight compute units less, while previously we had a huge difference of 32 compute units from the 6700 XT to the 6800 XT. So, I mean, I don't really know what AMD is trying to do with this, but I do hope that these cards perform well and they're priced accordingly to their performance and not more than they should be. And take in consideration that I'm talking this, but I did not see yet the performance numbers. As claimed by AMD, the 7800 XT will, on average, outspace the GeForce RTX 4070 by 3.5% at 1440p gaming with maximum settings. Some titles even demonstrate a 5 to 23% advantage, although certain games utilizing ray tracing favor the RTX 4070. While the RX 7700 XT is supposedly 12% faster on average compared to the GeForce RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabytes. On top of this, AMD confirms that there will be no reference models for the RX 7700 XT and only the 7800 XT will have the dual fan design, design that was presented before once again uh, with the with the 70 with the 6700 XT cards, while the 6800 and above uh, were already having the the, thr the triple fan well, the triple fan coolers. But well, it might not be that bad if the if these 7800 XT cards reference models actually have the vapor chamber. In that case, dual fans will be more than enough. Now, as for the performance, if you think about it, well, there's a reason why they're comparing uh, their cards to the RTX 4070 and RTX 4060 Ti. First of all, if we look at the 4070, for example, and if we look at the 6800 XT, we can see immediately we can see immediately that the 6800 XT is on average the same or slightly faster than the RTX 4070 in terms of rasterization. And they're exactly doing that, they're comparing the rasterization in those cards. Meaning once again that, like we were talking before, um, 12 computer units is a lot and I feel like this whole generation is a bunch of garbage uh, in the lower end part of the spectrum. As you can see, for example, the RTX 4060 is only slightly faster than the RTX 3060, although it can be even better than the RX 7600 because as you can see in this video, I tested it myself. For example, let's say the, the RTX 4060 Ti is barely faster than the 3060 Ti while costing more and so on. Uh, going, for example, for the 70 7700 XT and 7800 XT, it seems that the 7700 XT will be indeed a good card to pick, but the 7800 XT will actually be a letdown as it is barely faster than the RTX 4070, meaning that it is more or less performing the same as the 6800 XT. On the other hand, the 7700 XT seems to be performing quite well because it has more computer units and it performs better, uh, usually way better than the, um, than the 4060 Ti. Uh, so it means that it might be, le let's say, on par with, uh, with the 3070 while consuming less power, having, well, having other things like AI accelerators and so on, so on, so on. But of course, having 12 gigabytes of RAM and maybe it can reach higher performance tiers when we do a slight overclock and undervolt. Something that can be done on the AMD cards, on the AMD cards, something that can be done, of course, on the NVIDIA cards as well. Uh, but at the same time, well, and AMD cards are better known to, well, to easily overclock and undervolt at the same time to reach better values. I mean, even the 7600 can achieve around 150 watts of full board power draw, full board, not the GPU core, 150 watts of full board power draw, which is slightly below, well, slightly, quite below the 6650 XT, for example, while delivering the same performance. So in terms of power draw, it is not that bad as soon as you know how to undervolt it. The same may apply, for example, for the 7700 XT. If we can actually tweak those cards, they might perform much better than at stock settings. The same applies in some scenarios for the 7900 XT and the 7900 XTX. So who knows? Let's wait some more hours, I guess. Well, guys, that's all for now. Let's once again wait some more hours up to 4 p.m. in Portugal, 5 p.m. Germany time uh, till we can actually see the, the new things more, more in, well, 
we can see more data about these new cards and more data about FSR3 that will most likely be presented on today's live stream once again. I just wanted to make this video to give you um, some fast info of what FSR3 can be and the newer cards can be. Well, it seems that uh, the 7800 XT is quite of a letdown, while the 7700 XT seems like a very interesting product once it is priced accordingly. <coughs> well, that's a lot of dust here once it is priced accordingly. But basically, that's what I believe. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video.